Chains of Blasphemy. Woo bird. Coming to you not quite live from Peanut Death Studios, a Bad Deal Records production. I am Sasha Sandemic. With me is my highly esteemed colleague, uh, Brian O'Hawk. Brian, how are you doing today? All right, I'm doing great. Thank you. Did you get enough sleep? Yeah, actually, I did. Uh, we, we, we both uh, are in a very good time in our life in that uh, we both both surpassed the ability to join the 27 Club. The great thing that I think everybody who sort of uh, follows uh, musician biographies kind of knows about, uh, for those of you who don't know about it, it's, it's the idea that uh, many musicians, they die young, usually averaging out at about the age of 27, either on 27 or just before 27. And uh, a lot, I think that brings up a lot of interesting uh, facets as far as the musician's lifestyle, because it does seem like more than any other profession, musicians seem to follow a course in their lives and which, which leads them to a lot of bad decisions and a lot of negative consequences. It's sort of a fast life, you know, little impulse control, nothing else. And I've always wondered, do you think that it's the lifestyle itself of becoming a musician that leads them to these sort of bad consequences? Or do you think that it's just that the people who are more likely to fall into that sort of downward trend just happen to be the sort of people who are more likely to become musicians. I think partly it comes to uh, the uh, the music industry that brings the uh, the lifestyle of what you see mm -hmm. for like the Twenty Seven Club and things like that. Um, sometimes, yeah, there's there's uh, those who already have somewhat of a problem with something, or they're you know they already have some of that lifestyle because they want to be you know. The musician is the rock style lifestyle, which is, you know, was it just sex, drugs, and rock and roll? But I mean, I think some people they get into it being a lover of of music and and playing and stuff, and uh, then once they get going and they see how the music industry runs, they kind of freak out and they change their persona or change their, you know, themselves to try to fit to it, and you know the stress of everything. They start doing all the other stuff. So you're saying like they see it's become sort of an ideal, a norm to be the sort of rebellious person with like a little forethought, a little impulse control, and they just kind of I say they sort of live up to that idolized image of it. They they think they're cool because keep in mind a lot of these music, a lot of people who are musicians they get into it when they're young, usually like teenagers or some of late teen, mid to late teens, early twenties when you really don't have much <laughs> as far as forethought goes and impulse control. Like you're really like very susceptible in that age, very impressionable. So if they, they sort of see like the artists that came before them, do you think like they sort of just start living up to it? And why well, you think like the industry itself is sort of set up in such a way that it might, it, it's sort of very conducive for them to sort of fall down this bad trend and end up dead at 27. <laughs> yeah. Um, because with drugs, it's, vice, drugs, alcohol, yeah, 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 sex is very readily available to Yeah, them. yeah, it is. I mean, um, that's the thing is like, you know, from what I know of music business, it's they kind of try to do as much as they can to milk as much out of you before you're mm -hmm. dead and gone in a sense. And so they, you're just a product to them. So I think it's because of that attitude they have. Um, it kind of gets to the musician and it gets to the artist and stuff. And it, you know, makes you go crazy in a sense. I mean, just, you were mentioning a 27 club, but I mean, just any type of thing. I mean, you can think of like Britney Spears. She had a mental breakdown, shaved her head and just whole thing. Right, and right. she's somewhat bounced back from it and stuff. But well, she bounced I mean, back from it. She, she had to go away for a while, but yeah, yeah. She had really to get away from it. But that's the thing is, is, I mean, you can, Think about any of those artists. I mean, going, keeping with the the uh, pop genre is uh, Mariah Carey. She had a mental breakdown, went mm -hmm. away, came back. Uh, Justin Bieber now, I, I think he's just mental as it is. I mean, but he, it's, he's a prime kind of someone that I think he was put in limelight at a very young age, and I don't think he really knows what the hell he's doing in some ways. And he, he might have people around him that don't have his best interest in mind. Yeah. They let yeah, him get I, away with a lot of stuff. Yeah, they do. I mean, he, he kind of has this attitude of, of like, he's a you know, he, he's better than everything else and what he does, is, you know, for headlines and stuff like that. And I mean, I think it's pretty stupid that, you know, people still follow 
what he does and, and like keep him keep putting him on all those oh, different yeah. things and that's what keeps him going because he stayed in the limelight but uh i think that's because it's partly he was in it too young and you know the stress of of the music industry it's going to you know kind of make you do that it makes you crazy stir crazy in a sense so but, you think that uh, it's combined well people will have certain expectations of with certain pressures of you so do you think that it's also this is sort of a way that a lot of these artists who feel that pressure sort of weighing down on them who feel like they have to live up to a certain expectation they sort of use these methods to sort of cope numb themselves to the environment they've been placed placed in because i mean uh look a lot drugs aren't new as far as the music industry yeah, and, yeah, and listen before and i know people are listening people are going you know like well you know like i use recreational drugs every now and then you know and i'm fine not what we're talking about not what we're talking about at all we're talking about people who have become addicted people who, it's become a part of life it's controlled life it's you know it's they have demons on account of it and it sort of haunts them and it becomes detrimental to the art and the talent they try to produce you know, like, well, he, I put Elvis in that, I'll put Johnny Cash in that, I'll put Miles Davis in that, into those characters. They, you you mentioned, uh, when we talked about this uh, the other day, uh, you mentioned that uh, a lot of them think that they're getting better as they're using the drugs. It's freeing their minds, opening their mind. When we had this conversation before, but uh, to outsiders listening in, it's a downward trend that they're on you like uh you can see it but they can so it kind of becomes sort of detached from the the reality of it. yeah yeah i mean you know being around musicians that i have been you know i've heard things said like you know they're better when they're high or you know on their drugs and stuff they did better music out there and stuff but the thing is i think it's not just the musicians do that it's all sort of art artists you know actors and things like that you know they'll make a comment of well, well i do better when i'm you know, on my drugs or, you know, taking drugs and stuff like that. And some of them, um, I think it's, it's, you know, they depend, it's too much of a crutch for them. Then they, you know, that's what takes them, you know, it takes their life or whatever. Like, you know, the 27 club, a lot of them, you know, died of either self-inflicted wounds or, you know, mm -hmm. drugs and the, you know, and it's due to the drugs that they did that in a sense. Um, you know, some of the artists who, I think if they, would have stopped doing the drugs or never did the drugs. They would have a different mm -hmm. uh, style or feel to their music as it is. Um, like uh, Amy Winehouse, you know, big alcoholic, huge drug addict from my understanding. Mm -hmm. her, I thought her music was okay, but, I mean, it's it's the, sad that she went the way she did because it was, she was addicted too much and she couldn't get away from it. Hers is, seems extremely sad because hers seems like a case because that uh, – she really probably she needed help i think everybody who saw her knew she needed some sort of help long before she was dead you could sort of just pick that up i i think you you didn't need to know who the heck she was all you had to do is sort of see a picture of her or watch a video clip of her but uh it seems like no the environment she was in within the music industry really none of that help was available to her now you could say like well you know she didn't seek it out you know that schmuck she was dating <laughs> was probably also a bad factor in her life. But I really think that she wasn't in an environment that really wasn't conducive to give her any sort of help. You know, like, and we're focusing, you know, on substance abuse a lot because often that's how it reflects itself when they sort of, but when I say uh, the sort of lifestyle of a musician has bad contract, I'm talking about like even personality types, they seem to be very aggressive in some way, uh, prone to anger, short fuse, much more than, a, you know, the average person is. And a lot of times when you read biographies, you'll see things like when they say like, well, you know, like they were so easy going, so nice. But then, you know, like after a year or two or three or four in the music industry, there's some kind of switch goes off. And even if it's, even if it's not, you know, alcohol or drugs or anything like that, they, they become much more prone to anger, much more aggressive, violent people. You know, in one way or another, it's yeah, sort of, yeah, they go it's, like the schizophrenic personality. Switch. Yeah, I mean, it's, some of that I think is the fact that it's, um, you know, the way they're taken care of as you know, they're they're handlers in a sense. They're mm -hmm. you know, record labels and everything else. Uh, you know, they promote them as much as they can. They try to stay on their good side to get as much uh, play out of them as possible. And so you'll get those people who think they're better than everyone else, and you get that. 
you know, my crap don't stink type of whatever. And so mm-hmm. they get that attitude and they're going, I mean, Axel Rose, that, that right there, yeah. who just states it all. I mean, I don't know what he is personally, how he was before Guns N' Roses or any of that stuff, but there's too much footage of him just stopping concerts because Being a dick. things didn't go his way right. and he threw his fit and he left the stage. I mean, that's but then we're going just to like messed little, up, I think. But <laughs> little concern, a little foresight because he's not, he doesn't seem to give a crap about he's in the, he's in the vicinity in a large area with a large collection of people who are young, who are probably aggressive, who are hyped up, who e- easily pissed off, who are ready to tear shit apart the yeah. second he leaves. And he doesn't understand, he didn't seem to really get, and a lot of them seem to get like, you're, when you're up on that stage, you're sort of in the area position of control and yeah stuff. yeah yeah like and you can sway the crowd one way or the other and if you exert some sort of anger uh some sort of aggression or something that sets them off it can very easily go bad for you it's so sort of you do have a certain level of responsibility but we're expecting again teenagers and young people who don't have the maturity to have the level of maturity while at the same time they're in the care of people who want to exploit their youth and the impulsive uh, it's, nature. It, it sounds like you're talking from experience there. I, I, am, I am not. I am not. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure, sure. <laughs> I plead a fifth on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Um, but again, it, like it, it brings us back to like the question, like this, see a lot of musicians. I mean, and, we talk, and I know they're always, you can find exact, you know, outliers here and there, but we're talking about, you know, a specific type here. A lot of them come from similar backgrounds broken homes in some way or another. There seems to be at least, maybe, you know, maybe not always abusive, but they avoid that they're trying to fill and they're trying to fill it yeah, with the art that they have, with the talent that they have. And uh, maybe that's sort of what fuels <laughs> this trend in them, like to go down a bad, bad road. Yeah, I think um, that is one thing in common that a lot of musicians do have. I mean, broken homes um you know alcoholism in their family and stuff like that mm-hmm. so they are prone to you know fall back on some of that or you know blame the world for their messed up childhood or whatever some musicians yeah they'll like go further than that they're just like yeah i came from a messed up childhood or came up for whatever but you know that's my thing to deal with not my fans i'm just going to do my thing and you know they portray a decent uh visual persona i guess for Mm -hmm. their fans you know and and it it works out for them but i that's i think a whole different thing and and that's like a rarity in the music business in a sense because a lot of those who'd have the broken homes and stuff you know it they talk about it all the time and it's in their music or they're too aggressive or they music is like yeah or or they they fall back on the drugs and they blame their you know childhood for it and stuff like that and i mean you know we don't know exactly what goes through their mind i mean you can talk to them and they will tell you a story but how much of it's true how much of it's not I mean, they don't know themselves you know, a lot of times. yeah and 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 that's the thing is you know i think it's because they're so hyped up on on uh what they're doing either by their producers or their their uh you know music people Who's their, their backers the or their drugs that they just lose touch with reality and what they came from and so they kind of just feed something else out there. Right. Because, I mean, many of them do. The reason why a lot of young people want to like get into this profession, they want to get into the music industry, they want to get into the field, is it's a mode of expression for them. Like, they, it, it's a method for them to sort of be individuals in a time when you're trying to find your individuality. Yeah. So that's a lot. Of, but a lot of times they end up, when they go down this sort of path, negative path, they really end up losing themselves in a, I don't know, trying to live up again to the ideal, to the pressure in some, in, in some sense. And uh, I'm not quite sure the industry being what it is, if there is any way, any way, way for them to get get around it. I mean, sure, you can surround yourself with like ground yourself, surround yourself with good people and things like that. But there still seems to be something within that lifestyle where it, it becomes a lifestyle, like music itself is seen by many of people in the field as a lifestyle in and of itself and not a profession, not a career, not a job. Like you can work in an office building yeah. and you go there and then you come home, but that office doesn't define you. Yeah. Well, I think what it is actually is it's more of a, once you become 
something in the music business, it is actual a business. I mean, mm -hmm. I, it's kind of opposite of what you're saying, because when they first start off, they they're doing it for their passion. That's why mm -hmm. it changes. They're you know they're doing stuff to get their fans out, so you know to you know make fans get their mm -hmm. you know their ideals out and stuff get like that. Out. And once they do get picked up, they you know you have that first year of euphoria of like yeah we're signed, we're doing good, we're gonna do so much and blah blah blah, and then the music industry kind of just shoves it in your face like this is what's gonna happen. You're you know not an individual anymore. You're our band. Your You're name right. is us. We own you. You know, and that's what it is. And so they get that, you know, build up well, of so many different things happening that I think that's what happens is they lose their individuality and they, they well, turn it more of a, it's a business. It's not, we're not doing it for fun anymore. Or we're doing a tour and we're getting told while we're on tour, hey, you know, where's your next album? We need to start working on your album. Where's this? Where's that? You know, and so you don't have time to like, hey, let me just be creative, you know? Well, no, no, I get, I get what you're saying. But uh, I think the point that I was trying to get at is uh, the way any other, if you compare that sort of a job, that profession of being a musician to yeah. any other job. You know, you can be a dedicated, passionate, I'm, I'm trying to think of it. Let's say you're a dedicated, passionate teacher. Yeah. You, know, you, you teach, uh, that's your thing. In some ways, it's your personality, it's your identity, you really care about that. At the same time, though, you can be a teacher from, you know, whatever, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then once 3 p.m. comes in, you clock out, you sign off, whatever, you grab your suitcase, you go home. And you can go home and you can do whatever else you want to do yeah there is no teacher lifestyle in that sense which i mean to be a musician however a lot of them it, you can talk coherently about a musician lifestyle about a, a particular trend uh that a lot of them go into the way you don't have another profession so when i say like they don't separate you know from this is my job to this is my life yeah uh, a lot of times I'm thinking maybe it's because they blur the two lines in that sense where it start they they see it they see it as a level of seriousness that uh, further detaches them sort of from the reality of things because in the end of it look if you didn't go into the music business you would still have a life but a lot of them, the way that they go and the way, you know, they desperately try to cling to whatever it is that they can, you know, like they, a lot of them will resort to, you know, the various vices, you know, whichever, way, yeah. you know, pick your poison, whichever one happens to be this, because they're starting to feel burnt out, but they feel like there's still expectation being put on. Yeah, you need to produce into, and a lot of them feel like, oh man, if I don't deliver what's expected of me, I'm I'm nothing. I am nothing without this because yeah. a lot of them they, they didn't have any other jobs before well, they did that, this. That's the thing is I mean that's partly because of the music business, the industry. Right. What they do is they they kind of give you that you know you need to do this. There's no other choice you have. We own you. Uh, I've said it you know right, before. Right. Say it again. You know that's what it is. It's I mean you can find some uh, you know record labels and stuff like that that will kind of work with mm -hmm. you and they have more of that independent film uh but but a lot of artists nowadays who are out there musicians wise a lot of them will swear to not go with a record label they will stay independent you know consistently mm -hmm. because they have their choice of what they're doing but i think even though that they're doing that they still have those problems that they can run mm -hmm. into but they're least likely to have it like like the the you know drugs and alcohol yeah they'll have it but that's because that's a problem they already had it's mm -hmm. not that they ran into it or they're trying to emulate their rock star lifestyle mm -hmm. you know but then we have to admit then that there is something within being a musician soul like a pure musician someone who is I don't know, I hate using the word destined but for lack of a better term somebody who set out to be a musician you know from youth you know like that's that's the goal that's the dream job. Uh, there is something then within that character that makes them more prone to fall into these sort of negative habits and which can be detrimental to their life. Because, I mean, the indie scene is a good reflection. Like, I can see how somebody like, uh, you know, Justin Bieber or someone like that, uh, Britney Spears when she was uh, 16, uh, can can fall down a bad path because the sort of environment that they're in is a sort of the mainstream uh, marketed label will put demands on them that might make it really hard for them uh it, it, it might make it really it, it conflicts with their life and their happiness uh however someone in the indie scene who often also falls to the same sort of way especially like in the 
rock scene, like the hard rock yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. Like they don't really have that much expectation or pressure on them. However, they will still sort of succumb to a lot of these de- same sort of demons, which will cut their lives short. And uh, maybe maybe it's not like a maybe we can make like a general blanket statement. It's probably not one clear answer. It's probably different. In the, you know all generalizations fall flat at the level of the individual. That's just how it is. But however, statistics and generalizations are the only way we can talk about anything. Yeah, it, it, we can't have a conversation around. It. So maybe you know it's a combination of factors. Maybe it's you're more prone. You know, more creative types, more talented types, artistic types just have that sort of you know impulse barrier when it comes to certain things. But combined with the environment, it sort of sets the perfect framework for them. To you know, give in to all these uh, bad vices they, that they could be faced with. Yeah. Temptations. Well. Um, yeah. <laughs> it. I always had a theory that uh, creative people have more problems because mm-hmm. they're creative people. They run things their own way. They're just used to it. They come up with ideas. They're constantly thinking. They're constantly doing something. They're trying to be creative. And it's not that. Oh well, I have to be. It's I have to do something. You know, because. If I don't do it, I'm going to go crazy. And I think that's what it is, is they already have that that ability of just being, you know, so brilliant in a sense of, of whatever they choose they're doing um, to help calm it down sometimes on their off time when they know they shouldn't be doing something or whatever. They may fall back on, on uh, you know, drugs and alcohol or whatever, you know, that is. And that's one thing that I've, I've seen with many artists as it is. It's creative people or any sort of artist of any sort are odd, out there. They're odd people. You know, and it, it's like, and the you, fans you, love them, please. Yeah, and the fan, no, the fans love them and stuff. But I mean, just in general, like you can look and read articles or whatever it is, and and of things that have happened, and and you know, stories that have been told, and you're like, well, how can they get away with doing what they're doing, and and you know, I can't do it. You know, I'm just a regular person. And if I did that, I'd be in jail or I'd be whatever. You know, you always people always think like, you know, why do famous people get away with everything? It's because they're creative people and they just know how to get out of it, I guess. Oh, I, mean, I really would, don't know. <laughs> and also partly, we accept that, you know, right or wrong, like you can argue like a, maybe we shouldn't accept the, this as a fact, but a lot of us just accept it as a fact, quotation marks on fact, uh, we accept it as a state of things that uh, there seems to be a difference between us and them, like celebrity, non-celebrity, in, in that sense, fame, non-fame we so we sort of just sort of give in to the idea that uh, well you know because they deliver us with this sort of artistic uh, talents they, they they give us their art uh will give a free roam on certain things and maybe that plays into some of the stuff because i mean i think what you were trying uh, what you were getting at is uh that uh, a lot of these people are brilliant in some way they're talented and uh, they're brilliant and don't confuse brilliant with like, you know, I'm not saying their IQ is like 180 or something, but they are brilliant in some way. And that brilliance makes it difficult to ever get them to disagree, like to ever disagree with them and you know, show them that maybe they're not making the right decisions sometimes yeah. because they think they know everything. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, you know, what we've been talking about most of the time, mostly right now is, is the modern musician and stuff mm-hmm. like that. The thing is, it, it goes all the way back to, you know, creation of music in a sense. Because, I mean, you can think of Mozart. Oh, yeah. You know, Mozart, is a, he's a madman. I mean, he was brilliant at what he does, a child prodigy, mm-hmm. just blowing out everything. And he just kind of did odd things because he could get away yeah, with it. He I, was like, hey, I'm creative. I need to do something. You know, I think uh, I heard a story. Like, he told the church who mainly gives you the money at that time to make your music. He's like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. And I was she, like, that's just crazy. She is also <laughs> an interesting case because a lot of his stuff uh, – you know, even though he was like in, in the 1700s, so a lot of his stuff uh, mirrors what's happening now because he had a pushy fa- manager, apparently his father, who sort of was all about profit, profit, profit yeah. on him. And that probably also is what ruined to another grave. And a lot of times the way he fought against that is, you know, he made crude jokes and wrote letters and things like that about, you know, bowel movements. And yeah, things, yeah, and, yeah. And there's a lot of, so yeah, I definitely agree. Like this isn't anything new. So it might yeah. just be sort of uh, the curse <laughs> of creativity for some people. Now, of course, some people manage to fight through it. And a lot of times, it, again, it goes back to environment 
who do you have around you yeah but again like a I don't know. We can't really expect young people. Again, a lot of them will be young when they start. I think if a lot of musicians like waited till they were forty years old, they lived a life until they were forty, yeah, and then they went into the music scene. You know, if that was just an, in a hypothetical universe where there was a norm, you would see a different sort of uh, environment because by that point you were already, like matured. You went through your youthful rebellion. You went through all that, uh, all those phases, and then you're more. You're gonna be much more level-headed. Yeah. It's, it's, now, if you, I agree with that. Yeah. And if, you, <laughs> if you're the person that matures from the age of 15 to the age of 40, where you're a product, a commodity in some way, where, you know, your voice, your talent is what you sell to people. Yeah. And essentially, you're selling a piece of yourself. Yeah. Uh, you're prostituting yourself works. in some sense. Uh, <laughs> it, your perspective on life, on reality, will be very different from the average person like us. Yeah. Like, it's just the way you see the world is going to be different. The way you see yourself as an individual is going to be different. And uh, yeah, it's, the, it's it's pretty much going to be a combination of factors that I think affects. There is something different about musicians, the lifestyles and the sort of lives that they deal with. And, you know, a lot of it is great. You know, like a, we don't need to even list what all the great benefits that are about it because everybody can sort of think of them. But the... Uh, there are negative things about it and i think it's uh the psychology behind it is interesting and uh, maybe there are ways to get around it uh, maybe nowadays you know with better communication between fans and artists uh, it's going to blur the line a little bit bring it down yeah. to reality yeah i'm um, that's uh, that's the thing is i think it's uh i mean now with like twitter and facebook and all that stuff to where fans can actually get closer to their to the artist and you know kind of communicate directly Mm -hmm. with each other um i think it helps out a little bit it will help out a little bit but also a lot of the times those artists put their foot in their mouth plus they'll put something mm -hmm. out there and then they immediately turn around and retract it but mm -hmm. being it's already out there it you know, it's on the internet it's not going away well isn't and that, so they end up getting in trouble doesn't it, maybe that's going to help the situation better because the curtains down everything is saved in a way you can't hide things the way you used to yeah it, it it's it can help out and stuff, but the thing is, it also gets you, or it gives the, the fans uh, more of a an idea of what the the artist is truly like, not just the face of you know the the mm -hmm. the mask that they put on to be in public. You know, they'll put something out and it's something that they shouldn't have been putting out there, or you know whatever it is, and then you know the fans get shocked by it, and it's like they can lose their, you know, they can lose mm -hmm. their fans, they can lose backing by whatever they're had you know things like that so they can really hurt themselves in that sense but they can also you know say hey i'm not this cookie cutter thing this is who i am you either like it or you don't mm -hmm. you know and so i think that that uh nowadays artists with you know having to deal with all the crap that the music industry puts them through and then all the crap that the fans want them to do and then you know them just having social media to vent everything out that can get in more trouble but they can also help each other out and i think that has in a sense helped out a little bit of, of the uh the uh ideal of what musicians are you know the, you still got those kind of wacky out there people like miley cyrus you know posting nude photos and just being weird but i think she's doing it just because she's trying to get away from that whole disney look you know yeah, but uh, <laughs> i think at this point she's somewhere sort of become a part of identity that I don't know. I I just get the feeling that a decade from now she's gonna look back on some of the things that she's done, and she's gonna have a different perspective on it. You know, that's all I'm gonna say about that. You know, negatively or positively, I'm pretty sure at 30 years of age she's gonna look back and be like, I I see things a little differently now. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sure she's gonna calm down. I mean, she's only what like 20 something. Mm -hmm. She's pretty young, so I mean, she has a little while to go before she, you know, sees the light. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, like a, it's probably gonna be. A, Maybe it's going to be different this century, this coming music, uh, the music field or lifestyles uh, for musicians in this coming century, just because uh, new media and new technology will probably keep them grounded a little bit more than uh, their predecessors <laughs> had uh, in the 20th century and before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I think uh, I think we, we can wrap up uh, on that. We don't want to start repeating ourselves now. Yeah. No, it, uh, that was us saying some blasphemy and we'll be back next week. See you guys.